Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Saxo Bank Dubai censored by regulator of DIFC. Oversupply of steel in UAE forces prices down. And AT&T to buy T-Mobile USA for $39 billion. Let's look at the equity markets. First, the UAE bourses drifted in different directions today. The DFM General Index fell 0.2% to close the session at 1,506 points. Stocks to watch are DP World, which fell 0.2%. Dubai Islamic Bank dropped 0.5%, Do fell 0.7% and Imar Properties lost 0.3%. 125 million shares were traded, valued at 152 million dirhams. And over in the capital, the ADX on the other hand gained 0.5% to close at 2,614 points. The construction sector rose the most, Alder Properties was up 1.5%, so real estate though remained unchanged. The banking sector was mixed. Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank was down 1.2%, while Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank gained 1.3%. And First Gulf Bank posted a plus of 1.6%. National Bank of Abu Dhabi rose 2.2%. 35 million shares were traded, valued at 60 million dirhams. And now let's have a look at the GCC markets, which ended mainly higher today. And now to our top stories. The regulator of the Dubai International Financial Center, DFSA, censored Saxo Bank Dubai for breaching anti-money laundering rules and systems. However, the DFSA found no evidence of any money laundering having taken place. According to Bloomberg, Saxo Bank admitted it had breached rules relating to taking on clients by failing to obtain sufficient information of their identities, permanent addresses and sources of income. It also said in a statement it had failed to adequately monitor client transactions and establish and maintain appropriate controls in relation to politically exposed persons. The DFSA appointed the Saxo Bank advisors to improve its monitoring of clients. An oversupply of steel in the UAE is pushing prices down. Good news for Abu Dhabi as the Emirate takes advantage of the lower prices. It stocks up on construction products made of the metal. One of the reasons behind the drop in steel prices is that shipments that were headed to Middle Eastern countries that have been defected to the UAE due to the unrest in parts of the region. Analysts say the construction slowdown in the UAE has affected steel prices. In recent months, though, they have been stabilizing. Experts also said that Japan's natural disaster will most likely curb steel supply. The creation of jobs for millions of young GCC nationals that will join the workforce over the next decade is a top priority for the region's governments. Over the next seven years, the GCC labour markets must absorb double the number of local workers, according to experts. They added that only 35% of the GCC's population able to work are in fact employed. Consultancy company McKinsey said, it is not the economy itself that will be able to create jobs, the challenge is for the GCC governments to create employment for its nationals. According to a study conducted by McKinsey, the GCC has created more than 3 million jobs in the past five years, but only 250,000 jobs for locals. Dubai has a high Revealed Comparative Advantage, or RCA, in global sugar trade, according to the Dubai Chamber, thanks to its free and open market. Officials say an index level of more than 100 is competitive and the RCA for Dubai's re-exports of sugar currently stands at 266 points and at 140 points in free zone exports. Dubai's strategic location also puts it at an advantage with nearby countries Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Iran amongst the highest importers of sugar. And in our fast financial news, Abu Dhabi Ports Company and Abu Dhabi Terminals briefed customers, shipping lines and government entities today on some of their key projects underway, including the Khalifa port. Captain Mohammed Al-Shamizi, Vice President of the Ports Unit, said the company is always keen to involve its customers and business partners with their plans, which is important for business. And more from the shipping industry, DP World has completed the second stage of development of the Caucedo port in the Dominican Republic. The second phase was inaugurated by the country's president Lionel Fernandez and Sultan Ahmed bin Sulaym 
chairman of DP World. Phase 2 will increase the handling capacity of the port by 25% on an annual basis. Chinese oil company PetroChina is looking to build oil storage facilities in the Fujairah port. The oil giant is currently in talks with the Emirates government to build a 1 million cubic meter of storage capacity unit at the port. It is not clear whether PetroChina will build the unit on its own or work together with a partner. The Maiden Group has announced the signing of a purchase agreement with Emirates Airlines for a private gated community for Emirates pilots comprising of 528 townhouses called Maiden Heights. This is the first of its kind agreement for both parties. And after the break we will run you through what's making the headlines in international business today.